Welcome to the Natrona County High School Winter Spring Parent Meeting for Athletics and Activities for the 2023-2024 school year. Well, if you were here last year, then uh, looking at this list, you'll see that nobody has changed. Uh, the only change that we have is uh, Megan Adams. She was Megan Capellas, uh, but she is now Megan Adams. Um, other than that, everybody else is the same on the administrative team, uh, as well as our athletic trainer. We do have a couple of changes from last year's head coaches. Um, you'll notice that up at the top, Cade Hillebush is now our head boy swimming coach. So he is um, leading up the charge for the girls and boys swimming teams. Um, the next change that we've had is in girls basketball. Uh, J.R. Wilson is our new head coach. Um, girls wrestling, um, we now have a head coach for that program and it is completely separate from the boys wrestling program. And Jessica Brenton is the new head coach there. And down at the very bottom, we are still uh, in search of a head coach for softball, but that will be taken care of shortly. Our booster club is absolutely incredible. I, I would go as far as to say that we have the best booster club in the entire state of Wyoming. I think we'd be hard, fed, hard pressed to find anybody better uh, than what we have here at Turner County High School. They, they work countless hours behind the scenes just to make sure uh, that things are, are ready to go, uh, that our students, uh, student athletes have a great experience and that our fans have a great experience at events. Uh, they work hard to, to make sure concessions are, are running smoothly. Um, they put a lot of time into merchandise. If you are interested at all in, in helping out, they could always use more help. Um, it's a completely volunteer uh, uh, club and uh, they could always use more help. So if you find yourself uh, with a little bit of time on your hands, please reach out to me and I can definitely put you in contact with the correct person and we can get you involved in Booster Club. They meet every Monday, sorry, every second Monday of every month in the library here at Natrona County High School at 7 p.m. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have all the help we can get. I won't touch on all these points, but as far as goals are concerned, first and foremost, we strive to support and develop each student in our athletics and activities programs, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, and intellectually as well. We know that student success is tied very closely to participation and involvement in extracurricular activities, so we're constantly striving to increase participation. And currently one of our big focuses is the culture here at NC, and we recognize that athletics and activities play a huge role in overall culture and atmosphere of a school. So our athletics philosophy, um, it's not terribly long, but I'm definitely not going to read this to you. Uh, there are a few highlighted words that I would like to touch on. Um, the first one there is participation. Uh, we just talked about that uh, a little bit and the importance of participation um, and the opportunities and experiences that it, it provides our students. Um, we want to aid our students in growth, uh, personal growth, physical growth. We want to help them learn how to express themselves in a positive manner and uh, teach them mental alertness. Um, we also recognize that there's a lot more than athletics uh, at a school. I mean, uh, it, there should be. Um, the, the main reason our kids are here is to, um, is to get an education. Uh, so we do strive to, um, to, to excel in academics as well as athletics. And, um, what we really want to do is prepare our kids to contribute to society uh, once they leave Natrona County High School so that they're prepared to move on, whether that's college, whether that's to a career, whatever it might be. Um, and ways that we help them uh, learn and be prepared is by teaching them sportsmanship, teaching them teamwork, teaching them how to compete uh, and how to win and lose gracefully. We want them to to have a healthy self-concept. Uh, we want them to learn how to take care of their bodies physically. Um, and, and also while they're here at NC, we want to, to help them develop school, school spirit and pride in, in who they are and in who Natrona County High School is. Our first priority is making sure that your child is healthy and safe. 
while in our care. So it's extremely important that if an injury occurs or something nagging is, even if it doesn't seem serious, that that is being communicated with, a, with your child's coach or coaches and with our athletic trainer. Um, a lot of times coaches don't know if an athlete's hurt. Um, athletes, so much, so much of the time, just try to play through the pain, pretend it's not there, mask it, whatever it might be. Um, but much of the time that just compounds the issue. So communication is extremely important when we're helping uh, our athletes be safe. Uh, if, if your child does go see uh, an outside physician, um, please just make sure that we receive any documentation necessary so that we can help with proper treatment while, you're, while your child is here and so that we can also make sure that we don't get them back to playing too quickly. We want to make sure that they are cleared by their physician. So again, open and active communication with the coaches and with our trainer. In order for the students to be able to participate in activities and athletics uh, in the Natrona County School District, um, they have to have their online registration completed. Uh, and it is an online method. Uh, there's really no other way to, to get that done. Uh, so please look at the instructions on this slide and follow those if you haven't already done so. At this point in the year, most uh, of you have probably already completed that. But there are a few that haven't participated in anything yet. They wait, you know, their first sport is in the winter or whatever it might be. Um, so please take a minute to get that done. The two things that I will stress, um, we have to have a hard copy of the physical here in our office. And we have to have insurance information before your child is allowed to even set foot uh, on the court um, or whatever playing surface that might be. For practice. They cannot practice or participate in any way, shape, or form until we have those two things. We have just a few updates to some forms this year. Uh, standard operating procedure 5342-5343 uh, basically states that there is no need for the district to provide transportation to practices or competitions anywhere in the Casper area. So that includes Evansville, Mills, and, and, and Casper itself, so just the, the Casper area. Um, the only place that that does not include is up on the mountain. Uh, kids are still um, unable to transport themselves up to the mountain for any sort of practice or event. The previous form that we used to um, for students to drive themselves to and from practices and events will no longer be used again because that's that's not necessary as long as that's here in town. Um, the, the, the district again is not responsible for transportation if a kid cannot transport themselves say to softball practice as an example that takes place off of campus. If a kid cannot transport him or herself to softball practice then it would be up to the parents to, to get uh, her to that practice um, that is not a district responsibility. Um, previously there was a form where we had to go through the whole process of a parent signature, a coach signature, and then an administrator signature to allow a student to ride back with somebody from an event uh, instead of riding back on the bus. That is no longer necessary. What we have in place is that coaches will have a sign out sheet at all away events and and it just a parent just needs to go up to the coach print the student athlete's name, uh, the parent then needs to sign next to that, and then they're free to take their child home. Um, it, just keep in mind that parents can only transport their own children, they can't transport anybody else, and children can only ride home with their parents and nobody else. If a parent is not there, then they must ride the bus back to Casper after their event. Okay, so we're now at the Code of Conduct. That's Admin Reg 5371. You can access that through the Natrona County School District website, uh, natronaschools.org. Uh, this is just a short blurb. I'm just going to read it. NCHS students represent our school and community and are expected to maintain the highest of standards. 
students participating in school activities or athletics will abide by the code of conduct policy, which governs behavior and expectations in school and in the community. The code of conduct applies to students involved in activities for the entire school year. So, for example, if you have a student that plays football, and maybe that's all they do is play football, so their season is done in November. The code of conduct still applies in May or early June as long as they are still in school. So if they violate the code of conduct in May, even though they haven't played a sport since November, the code of conduct will apply and it will be enforced the following football season or the next time your student, uh, your child plays in a sport. Um, the consequences for violating the code of conduct vary slightly depending on the sport and the number of contests uh, that any particular sport has. They're outlined on the next slide. It's time to discuss eligibility. The Wyoming High School Activities Association Handbook Rule 6.0.0 and the Turner County School District Admin Reg 5300 both outline eligibility and what that should look like. Of course, we follow both of those regulations here at Naturna County High School. Everybody's already aware that we are now following the intensive block schedule. That means that every student athlete must have 2.5 credits in order to be eligible to participate in any extracurricular activity. Um, that might be three classes, but then again, it might not, depending on if that is a half credit or a full credit course. So please make 100% sure that you are enrolled in 2.5 credits. Every student athlete must maintain all passing grades every week. Grade checks take place Wednesday morning. Um, we start pretty early with those. If a student receives a failing grade on a Wednesday grade check, then he or she is placed on warning for that week. Once they uh, have an F two weeks in a row, even if it's in a different class from one week to the next, if they show up on the list for two weeks in a row, they then become ineligible. They have until 324 of that day to get any failing grades up so that they can be eligible to to play. Being ineligible doesn't mean they can't practice. They can still practice. They just cannot compete. And then lastly, if a student is on the ineligible list for three weeks in a row or more, then it's really important that we focus on those grades. Remember, education does come first. Um, so they will be recommended for some sort of academic intervention, whether that's going to be one-on-one -on -one with the teacher, some after-school tutoring in the library, whatever that might look like for that individual. We'll make sure that they uh, get the help that they need so that they can be successful in the classroom. Let's talk about the athletics and activities attendance policy. So just before we get started, um, the attendance policy applies only to unexcused absences. Anything excused, whether it's parent excused, activities excused, whatever it might be, if it's excused, it's okay. This policy applies to unexcused absences only. So this is basically how this is going to come into play. If a student is participating in a sport or an activity and they miss more than two classes in a day, unexcused, they cannot practice that day. Okay, so they have to be in at least two out of four blocks in order to be able to practice. Um, if they miss three, they can't practice. Now, when we come to competition, a student has to be in school the entire day of a competition. If they are unexcused, even for one class, A block, D block, it doesn't matter. If it's unexcused, they will not be allowed to compete that afternoon. Um, they have to be in school the entire morning up until the time they leave if it's an away game. Um, if they compete on a Saturday, they have to be in school the entire day on Friday. 
Um, so that's just kind of the way that goes. And again, those are unexcused absences. So we, we check attendance uh, every day and we send the attendance lists to all of our coaches for that sports season and all of our coaches can have eyes on it. So just keep in mind that the focus is academics. We want our kids to be successful in the classroom. And one of the ways, one of the most important ways to be successful is to be there. If you're not there, you have a harder time succeeding. So um, keep in mind, administrators can make exceptions for cause. Um, sometimes we have a little bit more information um, regarding certain circumstances, but the vast majority of the time, if it's an unexcused absence, they will not be allowed to compete that day. So coach communication is extremely important, or the way in which athletes and parents communicate with coaches. So there's a specific protocol, uh, kind of a chain of command, that is expected to be followed here at NC. First and foremost, we want our athletes to be able to advocate for themselves. Um, they, they should approach the coach um, and discuss any, any issues that they might have, any concerns that they might have, athlete with the coach or with the coaches, depending on what it is. And then from there, they can make a, a plan to correct anything that needs to be corrected. Now, if there's not a satisfactory outcome from that, parents are more than welcome to contact uh, a coach to schedule an appointment. Please don't contact a coach immediately prior to, during, or after practice or contest. Um, it's best to reach out to them via email or whatever that looks like. Remind, I'm not sure, um, whatever works best for you to schedule an appointment with them. Um, also keep in mind social media, uh, social media is a great tool when it's used appropriately, but please do not air any grievances on social media. That's not an appropriate way to take care of an issue. Um, now once your athlete has met with a coach and the parent has met with a coach, if there's still an issue, most concerns are resolved uh, at that point. But if there's still an issue, feel free to contact me as the athletic director, I set an appointment, and we can discuss any issues with the athlete, the parent, the coach, or coaches, and myself. Um, and we will have all four of those things in there. Keep in mind, I will not be discussing playing time. Um, that's just not one of the things that I'm going to weigh in on. Let's discuss some basic expectations here at Natrona. Um, first and foremost, we want to make sure that uh, we're interacting positively with opposing fans and players. Um, it's we, we represent our school and our community, and we want to make sure that we're doing so uh, to the best of our ability. Let's be positive in our cheers, chants, gestures, whatever it might be. Um, let's fo focus on positive critique. Um, and how we can improve rather than criticism. Criticism is something that tears down. Positive critique is something that, that helps build and grow. So let's understand the difference between those two things. Um, right now is a difficult time for officials. Uh, we have a difficult time finding officials. Um, they, a lot of people have gotten to the point where they don't wanna do it uh, simply because of the criticism. Um, and for lack of a better word, abuse that they take from fans, um, coaches, players sometimes. So please respect the officials, uh, acknowledge them for their integrity and for their judgment. Um, sometimes it seems like they're out to get us, but let's be honest, they, they really are an unbiased party and they're human beings that uh, see things you know, the way they, that they see them. Um, and they're going to do their absolute best. They're not out there to get to get the kids or the coaches or the fans or anyone's school. They're just out there to do a job to the best of their ability. So please respect them. Don't tear them down. Let's celebrate our successes. And again, social media, let's use it in a positive manner. John Wooden is one of the best coaches uh, to ever coach any sport, in my opinion. Uh, I love this quote. 
about sportsmanship and character. He says, be more concerned with your character than with your reputation. Your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. So let's always focus on those, those things over here on the right side, the integrity, respect, appreciation, teamwork, responsibility, and positivity. This slide just contains uh, some resources that we have, um, various websites, and uh, a lot of information now, uh, and announcements, game day scores, um, whatever that might be, is going out through Natrona County High School Athletics social media uh, on Facebook. Um, you can find us at Natrona Strong, Twitter at, Natur at Natrona Strong, and Instagram at Natrona Athletics. No matter what, always remember that every day is a day.